Hello Wolfpack, uh, I'm still doing a series of altcoin videos that I'm kind of uh, recommending, I guess recommending, but but essentially that it, on my watch list in my personal portfolio that uh, I think are good uh, for trading and buying and obviously VeChain, um, that is a coin that a lot of people like, right? It's, it's gathered a lot of traction. I mean, you just have to look at a chart for two seconds to realize that uh, this is a very popular coin. Um, it hasn't had uh, the bounce from the September correction that a lot of coins have had, such as Solana. Uh, but we have actually seen um, quite uh, extensive moves to the upside on the chain from, from the bear market lows, right? I mean, we're down here at, uh, you know, what, 0.2 of a cent, and now we're currently at 13 cents. So, I mean, it, it's gone up quite substantially and there's, there's a reason being for that. I mean, VeChain uh, is focused around supply chain, um, the, the supply chain industry and logistics, and obviously there's a lot of innovation that's going to go into that um, that kind of field of work uh, via the blockchain. And obviously the, the real, real world adoption that's going to come from that is going to be uh, absolutely insane, right? We're seeing that already. Uh, we're seeing that already in the real world adoption with, with big institutions. Uh, typically, you know, through, through things like even WAN chain is a great example, right? A very, very small um, project. Well, not a very small project, but at best a mid cap project that has uh, got itself out there to the state group corporation of China, which is uh, the top three uh, in the top three highest revenue um, annually per year companies. So, you know, there's definitely space uh, and, and considering that the VeChain is probably 10 to 20 times bigger than WanChain, um, you're probably going to get a much more, uh, you know, massive adoptions uh, and, and on, on a mass scale because this this is the leader, right? This is the leader of um, distributed ledger supply chain um, solutions via the blockchain. So um, without getting into the fundamentals too much and mainly because I'm not like a fundamental genius on VeChain, um, you know, it definitely has a use case. It's a multi-trillion dollar industry, if not a tens of trillion dollar industry in the future. Um, and it definitely will be, um, you know, up for adoption at some point, right? If not already. Um, so you know, with that being said, and with, with understanding that uh, there is a base level of solid fundamentals for a very solid team as well, go ahead and check them out on your website, on their website, sorry. Um, you can understand that VeChain in terms of TA is going to be preferable to other coins, right? Because what you're looking for in an altcoin season is not only coins that look good on the charts, uh, but coins that have at least, right, a bare minimum passable fundamentals uh, so that you have that backing by the strong community. So it doesn't just drop down for like, 40% in one day, right? You look at coins like Shiba uh, or like Dogecoin, right? They go up very, very quickly and that's all well and good. But then since they don't actually have the utility to back it up, uh, when they drop, they drop very quickly. And that's why I like things like VeChain uh, and something that looks very similar. And I mean, we can look at this up right now. So we've got VeChain over here. Uh, something that looks very similar is Theta, right? Theta looks identical to VeChain. They're both released around the same time, right? Late 2018, just after the bull market. And they look very similar in terms of price action, right? So VeChain and Theta, um, and I'm not favoring any of them in regards to fundamentals because I don't feel the need to, right? This is an altcoin season. Um, right now, I'm not buying altcoins to hold for the rest of my life, right? That's what I'll do in the bear market, right? When the bear market comes, that's when I'm going to pick up some altcoins uh, to hold for the long term, uh, because at least at that point, I'll have the the extra evidence that they actually are going to survive a bear market again, um, and, and they'll be much lower in valuation. Because remember, you know, even if you like VeChain, even if you like Theta, even if you like any coin, Dogecoin, whatever it is, uh, just know that it will you know, and, and this is almost certain because it's, well, I'm basing it off historical data, obviously, but it will drop 90% in the bear market, regardless of how good the coin is, people will sell it, right? Because first and foremost, and you can consider yourself what you want, first and foremost, people are in cryptocurrency for the money, right? And yes, the technology is excellent uh, and the technology is revolutionary for sure, but you'd be lying to yourself if you'd said that, you know, you weren't in it for the money. And that's what it's all about, right? It's a financial market. So it's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Uh, but with that in consideration, yes, we do need to look at the fundamentals. But um, I think the technical analysis is actually more important to a certain extent, once you have that foundation of at least decent fundamentals. So with that said, uh, let's look into VeChain and what we can see on VeChain, well, is, as I said, a move up, massive move up and then a massive drop down. Obviously, as, as the May capitulation happened, we dropped down uh, roughly 80%. Um, 
and then we had this cup formation, right? A brilliant cup formation that looked very bullish uh, forming from around June to around August. We saw a handle as well. Let's get the pen out. We saw some sort of handle formation. We broke to the upside here. We've been moving to the upside ever since. But what I would argue now is that, well, this, this upside breakout hasn't necessarily been what we would expect from a cup and handle breakout of that uh, kind of duration and that kind of scale. We'd expect something a little bit more sharp. But since uh, we have seen the Bitcoin rally from 40k to around 67k. Bitcoin has stolen the spotlight and most altcoins have been left behind uh, until recent weeks when in November we've been surging a little bit on altcoins. But um, the point of the matter is, is that you know, VeChain hasn't seen the breakout and a lot of altcoins haven't seen the breakout we would expect it from those cup and handle formations. Uh, and so what I would argue now is that this cup and handle formation is mostly irrelevant, right? And what we're actually seeing now is a unique uh, and, and once again, another cup and handle formation. And one of the reasons why I think this one will be more relevant, right, is because, well, November, if you, all you need to do is look at the history, right? November is typically a time period in which Ethereum and altcoins tend to break to the upside. We even usually see a dip on Bitcoin dominance as altcoins break to the upside. And then December flips back to Bitcoin, Bitcoin tops out, and then altcoins obviously pop off in January, right? So that's what we've seen historically. Um, so if that happens again, and it's happened twice now, but if it happens again, uh, what we will be seeing here on VeChain, well, is upwards movements for November. Uh, December, we'll just kind of do whatever, right? We'll have to see what happens at that point, probably sideways, and then blasting off to the upside in January uh, and potentially into early February if we're following my price prediction of uh, 9 to 13k Ethereum by February the 3rd. So let's see what happens there. But the point is, November should be a positive month for VeChain. But First and foremost, uh, if this is indeed a carbon handle formation and, and there's a chance that it's not, right, I'll go into some of the scenarios in a second, then we need to be seeing a handle, right? And where would we be seeing a handle from? Well, we'd probably be, probably be rejecting from this resistance zone here at around 15 cents. Coming down in a quick handle formation, maybe by the late to mid-November, we'll be finishing that up. A small handle formation here is there isn't a lot of selling pressure, right? So it couldn't go on for too long, couldn't extend like we did here. Um, and, you know, that handle formation would go on probably down here uh, to around that 12.2 cent support zone, maybe somewhere around that region, maybe even down to as low as 11 cents, uh, and then break to the upside above this red resistance box coming down and retesting and then heading to the upside further in January. Right? That's what I expect on VeChain uh, in, in kind of the medium term time frame. Now, what I want to go over is another possibility, right? So we have that carbon handle possibility and, and we can actually take a measured move from that. We can measure from the bottom of the cup to the top of the cup, right? The test of the top. And we're going to get a test. Uh, we'll bring it up to there. And we can extrapolate to that to a breakout point on the presumed handle, right? So say we come down to around 12.2 cents. Uh, we can see it lines up perfectly with our resistance zone here at 19 cents, right? And that will be happening, in my opinion, by the end of November, right? 19 cents by the end of November uh, would be happening on VeChain, in my personal opinion. Um, as for another theory of what we have to see, well, we have another theory, and that is that we have some sort of sketchy, um, inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? A little bit of a dodgy one. Um, there's not really the clear uh, defined structure we want to see from it. We could actually say it's something like this, um, but it you know, it's a little bit, it looks a little bit more like a cup in my opinion, but we could say this is what's happening. And obviously uh, the charts have been acting um, a little bit strange as Bitcoin has been correcting up just after breaking all time highs. So the charts are looking a little bit wonky right now. This could actually be an inverse head and shoulders pattern. I think that's just as likely as the cup and handle formation, in which case we probably won't be seeing that correction down to 12 cents. Uh, we'd just be breaking to the upside, but the target would be the same, right? Because it's the same structure. So we'd still be aiming for 19 cents by the end of November. So either way, uh, 19 cents by the end of November seems likely. As for support on the downside, we can bring up the VVPR and we can say that, well, uh, we have basically right under us uh, until, you know, all the way down here to around 9 cents, 10 cents. We have a massive chunk of buying pressure from the VVPR. So on the occasion that we do drop down, it is very likely we'll be seeing a bounce. It doesn't look like we're going to um, drop straight through this uh, at any point in time. I think that it's a relatively safe time uh, to get into VET if you haven't already done so. Um, as for what I just said in the inverse head and shoulders pattern, 
Uh, we do want to be breaking the neckline, right? So the neckline would be here at the top of this red resistance box, and that's actually why I drew it out. So that red uh, would well, be around 16 cents, right? So if we break 16 cents and flip it, that's another buy signal, right? So buying right there, and then what's the most likely scenario from that point is actually heading up to 19 cents, our ultimate target by the end of November. So breaking uh, 16 cents and flipping that neckline pattern, right? So coming over and flipping that would be a buy signal, right? And waiting for the retest. If we drop right through, that's obviously not a buy signal, right? So we'd have to wait for the retest and then head to the upside. If you're a little bit more conservative, you could wait for that to happen. Uh, that's what I'm personally waiting for to happen because I already have uh, a variety of different coins that I'm holding. I really don't have space in my portfolio right now for that. And that's why I'm treating it as a trade rather than an investment because I don't like holding coins during the altcoin season. Um, I do this full time. This is basically my full-time job and so naturally I'm looking at the charts probably 10 to 12 hours per day and I can get a good indication uh, from the technical analysis of, of what's going to move and when and so that way I can time the market a little bit better than those people who wouldn't have that much time and, and so I don't feel the need to hold that many coins right I have a few coins that I'm holding but for the most part I'm trying to take advantage of these short-term pumps so if a coin goes up 30% I cut the profits from that and filter it back into a coin that hasn't moved yet that goes up cut the profits filter it back into a coin that hasn't moved yet and that's what I'm treating that as right and I'm using the solid fundamentals uh, as as a base for that right as the extra security and you know and the fact that we had that vvpr volume means that there's little downside risk uh, for this investment so in terms of the smas uh, it looks okay right we've got and this just goes to show we've got even more support right all the way down to around 11.5 cents uh, even more support coming from the uh, dynamic support blocks which are the smas um, the Bollinger bands we can see that we're on the top side of the Bollinger bands we have been there since the start of october and this is one of the reasons why i think it wouldn't be too abnormal for us to see a cup and handle formation rather than inverse head and shoulders because we have been on the top side of this Bollinger bands for over a month Right, over a month and so coming down a little bit and just testing and just coming in and testing this bottom region before spiking to the upside wouldn't be abnormal it would reset some of our indicators as well which is great to see but another reason why i'm undecided as to what pattern we're seeing uh, is because well we have a bearish macd cross literally uh intimate, uh if we see a slightly red candle we probably see that macd cross playing out and so you know, one red daily candle here would send that MACD cross, uh, you know, into a downward spiral, and hence uh, we'd probably see that cup and handle formation play out. You know, either way, it's bullish. But the point of the matter is, is that I'm not probably not entering that right now because you know it's it's a little bit uncertain of what the very very short term price action is going to be i know that in november it's most likely going to be bullish but in terms of very short price action it's uncertain as to whether we're seeing a cup and handle which means if we see the handle we're going to go down before we go up or we're seeing an inverse head and shoulders where we just break the upside so there's two ways of kind of looking at this right there's the way that well uh, the MACD is about to cross bearish and so the next logical thing would be to negate that cross and just spike to the upside right now so it avoids the cross right and the stochastic RSI would suggest that but I think it's just preferable just to wait and see what happens right uh, and that's why I said, as I said I'm waiting for 16 cents uh, waiting for a retest of 16 cents before I actually enter this coin for maximum maximum kind of clarity as to where it's going to be moving um as for the weekly chart, uh, again, this plays into the fact that we just have so much support, right? We have the 20-week 20, 20 EMA and the 20-week, uh, 20, sorry, 21-week EMA and the 20-week SMA on VeChain right below us uh, between 11 cents and 12 cents, which is great to see. That's probably the most major support zone you're going to get in cryptocurrency. We have the 50 SMA as well, a little bit lower than that at around 9.3 cents and moving upwards. We've just seen a MACD cross as well, uh, which suggests that we will be seeing that inverse head and shoulders pattern. But again, the weekly chart is a little bit um, misleading because one week is a long time. And so, you know, yes, a bullish MACD cross does suggest we'll be seeing green weekly candles but we can see that we've had one two three four five six green weekly candles and you know yes the price has gone up but it has seen corrections as well so the weekly chart isn't the best uh, kind of thing to look at if you're looking at the short-term price action because a lot of things can happen within those candles we can see some of these wicks are massive right uh so you know, it's a little bit misleading, but the point is we are bullish on a longer term scale, which means we're probably going to be bullish towards the end of the year and into January as well. As for longer term price predictions and end of cycle price predictions for VeChain, I'm looking at 65 cents. Uh, and the reason for that being, and, and before I even get into saying this, I know a lot of you VeChain fans are going to be a little bit angry about that for some reason. Um, but the point of the matter is, is that I'm a very conservative investor and I actually don't plan to hold VeChain, right? I do love the coin. I love the fundamentals. I think it's great, but I'll definitely buy it in the bear market. But as for the bull market, I don't 
don't hold many coins, right? I'm hold, holding two or three coins right now. The rest I'm trading. Uh, and so I don't feel the need to have, uh, you know, an overly bullish price prediction. 65 cents seems reasonable to me. And the reason I've come to that price prediction, we don't have uh, much information from previous cycles. The way I've come to that price prediction is kind of understanding that, hey, uh, around the time we reached 29 cents on VeChain or 28 cents on VeChain earlier this year, we reached 64k on Bitcoin. My personal price prediction for Bitcoin is 113k by January the 6th. That's around uh, around just under a 2x away from 64k. So if we double the VeChain price and add 50% returns as well, right, to account for altcoins outperforming Bitcoin, that brings us to around, and this is rough, 65 cents. So that's what I'm looking at for VeChain. That's not set in stone. That's not based on any fundamentals. That's purely uh, extrapolation of data. So let's see if that plays out. Again, it's really rough, but um, that's what I'm looking at. And honestly, I don't really care if it plays out, right? Because as I just said, I'm not holding this coin. I'm trading it. If you're a holder, go and find a channel that's going to give you a more price, precise price prediction based off the fundamentals. Um, but ultimately, I think it looks good, right? That's still, I mean, 60, 65 cents is still, it's at 13 cents right now. That's still uh, just under a 4x from current prices. So you can't complain with that at all. Um, as for the Bitcoin pair, Bitcoin pair looks good. All right, looks good. Uh, we're seeing pretty clearly uh, ever since the the top on VeChain at around 28 cents early this year, we've seen a descending wedge formation or a downwards wedge formation, which is typically a very bullish structure. Right, it has about a 70% chance of breaking to the upside. But with the cyclical theory on our side, I'd say there's way more than a 70% chance. I'd say this is very, very, very likely to break to the upside here on VeChain. Uh, and the reason being is because, well, uh, we know that Bitcoin typically outperforms altcoins um, at the start of the bull market, and that that adjusts that kind of um, accounts for VeChain going down in valuation on the Bitcoin pair. But then obviously as altcoins kind of take over towards the end of the cycle after Bitcoin tops out, uh, we see, and into November as well, we see uh, Bitcoin pairs kind of blasting off to the upside. And that's where I'm going to see uh, a break on V chain here. So I think that's going to come shortly. I think this month we're going to be breaking this triangular formation to the upside. Um, but I don't think, you know, I think we'll see a break into November and then possibly December, a little bit of stagnation. And then into January, as Bitcoin tops out, the real spike will come to the upside. Um, the triangle suggests the target for the Bitcoin pair being at around, and let's extrapolate this data quickly, being at around, you know, uh, 500 sats. I think it will go higher than that because that's only just above its all-time high, right? And usually when you uh, go above an all-time high on a coin in the Bitcoin pair, uh, especially in a bull market, it goes significantly above. So I think we could probably reach realistically anywhere from around 750 sats in that region on VeChain. That's probably what I'm looking at for the Bitcoin pair. Um, so overall, you know, it looks bullish. I'm looking to trade this coin, not hold it, but that's the case with most coins. So don't feel like uh, that's a bearish thing to me to say. Uh, I've added it to my watch list. I've got a lot of coins my watch list now but i'm all looking at currently it's the kind of reminds me of a theta right so whenever theta moves um i'm expecting v chain to move just because of what's what's happened historically right they look very very similar historically so they're in the same kind of category for me even though they're in different sectors in the market but i'm watching it keeping an eye on it and i'll let you know if anything happens thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one